I'm about to dig into one of Bangkok's best bowls of noodles. Yes. Oh, I love the bowls here. Big bowls. Today, I'm taking you on a Thai street food tour to eat five of the best types of Thai soup noodles. And the challenge is, we're gonna eat all five bowls in one day. Oh, you can just feel how tender it is in your chopsticks. That's what you call liquid meat. Introducing to you Bangkok's beef noodle superstar hero. Oh, this is the tongue. Oh. Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. I'm in Bangkok, Thailand. It's a beautiful morning and we're at the first place, but we're gonna eat a dish. It's a Thai dish that you definitely know of, but when they combine it with noodles, it's a little bit different. Oh, it smells so good. The name of this place is called Bom Thong Kiao, which means green flag. And this is the green flag that you enter. And the noodles that we're gonna order is koi tiao mu tom yum. So it's pork noodles with tom yum, which is again, one of the most famous Thai soups that you've probably heard of, that you've probably had, but this is the noodle version of it. She's making a bunch of orders right now. So she takes some of the minced pork, she puts it on the side of the bowl, it's raw minced pork. Then she adds in intestines, she adds in liver, she adds in all of these toppings, some fish cake goes in, some green onions. There's so many things that she adds in, vinegar, fish sauce. Amazing technique is that she adds the soup broth and it's hot and boiling. And so that cooks the minced pork and like crumbles the minced pork. Then in the meantime, he's boiling your noodles and blanching your noodles. And then that all goes directly mixed together in your bowl. Oh, that's such a cool technique. I love that. So that's all ready. Uh, the noodles go into your bowl and then she adds on, sprinkles on some pepper and then adds on some lard. Oh man, it's irresistible. I think my bowl is ready. Let's go eat. Oh, she's bringing them to our table. Someone dig up, someone dig up. Here we go. I love this place. It's like a little oasis right within the heart of Bangkok. I mean, we're surrounded by huge buildings, but we're within this quiet, peaceful, tree shaded, birds chirping oasis of tom yum noodles. First thing, grab a spoon. Grab some chopsticks. So excited. Oh. Mm. oh man, it's porky, it's rich. In addition to the bones, the pork bones being boiled for that broth for that soup, she adds in a nice scoop of fried pork lard and pork skin. And that gives it this incredible, intense, meaty porkiness, richness that adds to the broth. Oh man, it is already a little bit sour. It is a little bit spicy, a little bit sweet, all of those flavors combined. I mean, the, the flavor of tom yum is there, but let's do some seasoning. This is the typical Thai noodle condiments. We've got vinegar, chili is a must, of course, according to your preference. And this is another essential ingredient, crushed peanuts. That's gonna make it extra creamy. And now we'll go in for like the real stir. Now you can see that creaminess coming together with the peanuts, oh, with the chilies. Oh, the liver. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so good. And the peanuts are actually the, the ingredient that you'll typically find when you order tom yum noodles, as opposed to a tom yum gung or a tom, tom yum in a, in a bowl when you get the soup. And that's one of the main key differences that you'll find is that you're always, you'll always find peanuts when you eat kwetiao tom yum, noodles with tom yum. And to me, that gives it such a nice nuttiness, a creaminess, a richness, adds some protein, just enhances the broth. That piece of liver is so good. Creamy, a little bit sweet. Oh man, and the noodles are fantastic. A bowl of tom yum noodles. It has every contrast of flavor that you can imagine is in this bowl of noodles from sweet to salty to spicy to sour. 
plenty of sour. And I also love all the different textures, the silky noodles, kind of chewiness of the intestines of some of the organ parts, but all together in one bowl. Thais know all about harmony when it comes to flavor. And this is one of the great demonstrations of both yum noodles. And I love it when you get down to the bottom of your bowl, then you realize there's all these goodies, all this minced pork, and it, the flavor intensifies as well as it, you get down to the bottom of your bowl. Oh, I, t I totally missed the, the fish cake. Man. This is the way to break a sweat in the morning. That really is an outstanding bowl of good yum yum. Oh, that was so good. Oh, that was one of the better bowls of kwetiao tom yum that I've ever had. We're on our way to the next place. The next place on the side of the road next to a busy highway in Bangkok in Bangsu. We're here to eat what is, I think it might actually be possibly one of the most popular types of noodles that you can eat in all of Thailand in Bangkok, especially for breakfast and lunch. Let's go. I love this place and I love the culture that surrounds eating noodles. Oh man, the aroma of their broth, it smells so good. And we're here to eat what's called Goi Tiao Gai, which is straight up chicken noodles. And actually one of the main things that I, the reason that I love this noodles so much is it's usually called Goi Tiao Gai Mara, which is Goi Tiao noodles with chicken and Mara is bitter gourd. So that's the combination. And my absolute favorite noodle is Sen Lek, which is the medium sized rice noodles that we ate at the last bowl of noodles. Uh, so I think for the sake of variety, this time I'm gonna try Send Me, which is the angel hair, the very fine rice vermicelli noodles. They're super friendly here. The chicken has been braised in this, looks like a soy sauce, kind of a braising liquid. It's so rich, it smells so good, and she just keeps that kind of slow simmering. So you get the chicken, there's legs, drumsticks, there's thighs, uh, there's chicken feet, which are also very popular. And so they, again, you choose your choice of noodles. They boil blanched noodles, add in some bean sprouts, add in some uh, morning glory, glory, some cabbage, um, and then she, whatever chicken parts that you wanted, she adds to your bowl, plus some shredded chicken, and then from there, it's all self-service, whatever you want to season your noodles to your liking, to your own customization. And mine's ready. Yes. Oh, I love the bowls here. Big bowls. And all the seasonings are here at the front. So you do your own seasoning before you then go to your table. So it's self-service. But better stand here and taste the broth first before we season. That smells so good. Mm. Oh, oh, that's delicious. Salty, rich from the chicken stock. You taste the dark soy sauce in there, the garlic in there. Oh man, oh, that's so soothing. Now that we know how it tastes, that way we know how to season it, customize it. Look at this jar of vinegar, huge. Oh, they're not gonna run out of vinegar. Man, I love it when it's self-service at the front. When a noodle stall has all the toppings at the the front and it's self-service like this, rather than on your table, you know it gets a lot of customers, a huge lunch rush because this is how it's fast. Fresh bowl of Pik Nam Man or Pik Tod, like fried chili paste. Oh, this looks amazing. A little more chili for good measure. Just the, the classic dried chili flakes. Okay, chopsticks. Chili vinegar station is here and over here is the vegetables. This is one of my favorite reasons to eat chicken noodles, the bitter gourd. To me, this combination is just so good. It's such a such a complimentary combination. Got to add basil as well. I'm excited. Let's part the vegetables. Let's mix in chili paste. Oh, look at that color. And that's yeah. Now you can see the the difference of the noodles. This is send me the very fine rice vermicelli. Look at that broth. And then you want to kind of dunk in your vegetables so that they just get slightly wilted by the heat of that broth, yet not fully cooked, so they still remain fresh. Mm. Oh man, it's so comforting. That's chicken noodle soup on the next level. And the freshness of that basil, the richness, 
the saltiness of the broth. The flavor of the chicken condensed down. They don't have so much chewiness to them. They're more just like really go down really easily, really fluffy. I mean, again, I still do prefer Senlek over Senmi probably, uh, but actually the variety is really nice, especially since we have so many bowls of noodles to eat today. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh man. I absolutely love that combination. The crunch, the bitter melon when it's eaten raw like that, it has an even more crunch than a cucumber. And it has this subtle bitterness. It's not too bitter, but to me it just so well complements the flavor of the broth, the saltiness of the broth, the richness of the chicken broth. That's one of the highlights for me when eating Thai chicken noodles is the bitter melon that it comes with. And if they don't have bitter melon, that's like an immediate sign. I definitely won't enjoy it as much if it doesn't have the bitter melon. That's one of the highlights for me for sure. Let's break into the drumstick. Oh, oh, look at how tender it is. All the way to the bone. Oh, just totally falls out. And look at that texture. I hope you can see the texture of that chicken. It's just perfectly, like literally, this is the type of drumstick. You could just shake it and just all that meat would just collapse off the bone. Yeah, exactly like that. Oh wow, the chicken jumpstick just totally melts in your mouth. You don't even need to chew. And it's just like embedded with that braising sauce, the dark soy sauce, the garlic, a bit of sweetness. Mm. Oh man. You also taste some of those braising spices like the, the star anise, a little bit of cinnamon in there, black pepper, possibly some Siamese cardamom in there. The flavor of the, also some of the vegetables that they boil down in the broth, like uh, probably some shallots, some garlic, some, they also boil some uh, bitter gourd or maybe some uh, winter melon in there as well. And give it that depth of flavor, that contrast. Another thing they have here at the front you can get is guillotade. These are like fried wontons. Uh, one of the things you can do though is dip into your broth. Let it absorb, yet. Make sure it doesn't go soggy on you, and then go. Pretty good, yeah. Mm. Crispy, a little bit of pork on the inside, and then it just absorbs the flavor of that broth. Where's the foot? Oh, I do have a foot, but it's sort of, it, look how tender it is, it's sort of disintegrated. It's so, so tender. Okay, Ying has another foot she's giving me. Oh, thank you for the foot. Definitely rehydrate this. Get the juices going on the foot. Mm. Oh, that's an extremely good chicken foot. You know, I'm. sometimes they're good to me, sometimes they're not so good. This one is really good because it's so tender. Again, braised in that same juices that they braise the chicken and boil the chicken in, the drumstick that we had, the flavor, the saltiness, the depth of flavor, and they boil it until it's extremely tender. So you just got this kind of like, gelatinous, skinny material that surrounds the little knuckles and little fingers of the chicken foot. That's a delicious chicken foot. And their chili oil, that's so good. Spicy, fragrant, fried. The oil just packs a, a density of flavor and chili heat. Wow. That was an outstanding bowl of Guitiao Gaimara chicken noodles. And you'll find this, uh, I mean, this type of chicken noodles in Bangkok. I mean, there's thousands of places you can eat it, thousands of stalls, but they do an incredible job. And this place is called Guitiao Gai Sapandam Bangsu. We're in the northern part of Bangkok. Highly, highly recommended. They're extremely nice. And that's an outstanding, better than average bowl of chicken noodles. <laughs> On this Thai street food noodle tour, I hope you're really enjoying it so far. If you're enjoying it, please remember to give it a thumbs up and let me know what's your favorite type of Thai noodles in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. But next up, we are going to go eat what is one of my favorite Thai street food noodles. And this place is legendary. 
Oh yeah, this place is packed already. Welcome to Big Su Beef Noodle. This is a legendary beef noodle restaurant. Yeah, so we're here to eat Goi Tiao Nua, beef noodles. Oh, yes. Oh, okay, Kap. Lung, Kap. Oh, this is like a lung. Ah, okay. Oh, this is the tongue. Oh. Oh, Lin Yan Kap, it's a huge tongue. <laughs> Introducing to you Bangkok's beef noodle superstar hero. Oh, he is the man. Yeah, Uncle yeah, is the yeah, absolute yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> very okay. good, very good. Big Sue. Okay. <laughs> what? Thank you. What much. a legend. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And all the beef parts are just simmering away. The aroma is out of what control. I have you. Oh, yes. I have you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, the best. He uh, is in charge of still braising the beef. And I need um long. Ask him how long he braises the beef. He said five hours in that juice. Less. Okay. The broth. Look at how rich, how flavorful that broth is. Oh, tongue. Also for the noodles, they boil it in that broth. Here comes the noodles. Meatballs go in. Your assorted beef parts go in. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, Uncle is hooking me up with before we even get started. Oh, thank you. I need to like a loom. เลยถามฉันนะพื้นท้องเนี่ยเดี๋ยวจะให้ยูเนี่ยถ่ายอย่างงี้นะเข้าปากเนี่ยขอบคุณมากครับโอเคโอเคโอเคใส่ใส่
those noodles have just totally absorbed that gravy, that broth. And one of the things that I'd like to mention here is that a lot of people order it gao lao style, which is without the noodles. So it's just like a beef soup, and then you can eat that together with a bowl of rice. And so, but you can also order noodles here, just depending on your preference. But if you do order it with rice, that's especially why you want the dipping sauce. I'll go in for this piece. I think it's tendon. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Just absolutely melts in your mouth. Mm. A little bit jelly, a little bit gelatinous, a little bit cartilagey. So good. Cooked perfectly to perfection. Mm. Man, that is outstanding. I'm so happy. And here's the other part that Uncle gave me. It's kind of a briskety part. What I'm gonna do for this, vinegar chili, pour it on. Oh, it's so tender, like the meat just falls apart. You have to take it to your mouth fast before it falls apart. Oh, wow. Mm. Mm. Just meat after meat, part after part. That one has a nice mixture of meat, fat, kind of chewy bits, and tender bits all at the same time. I think I'll add a little more chili just for good measure into the broth. Okay, let's move into the, the intestines. A little bit chewy, but just the perfect chewiness. Great flavor. And something I like about all the organs is they're so clean tasting. Like nothing overpowering, nothing foul tasting, just clean, cooked to perfection, decades and decades of experience. I'll add in a little more chili vinegar, which is outstanding. That kind of cuts the richness of the soup broth. The soup broth is so rich. For my next piece of time, I think I'll just give it a little, the waterfall saucing. Man. Okay, now I know why uncle is so proud of his tongue. That is some of the world's most tender ox tongue that you'll ever have. Mm. And as we're eating this, one of the things I wanted to talk with you about this video is why are soup noodles, why are they so popular in Thailand? Why do Thais love them so much? Well, in my opinion, one of the reasons is this right here, the seasoning, because when you order a bowl of noodles, nobody will ever scold you, nobody will ever judge you if you add chili, too much chili, if you add a bunch of vinegar, if you add a bunch of sugar, if you add a bunch of uh, fish sauce, lime juice, vegetables, whatever you wanna add, it's totally up to you. And so that idea of customization, making it the flavor, the taste you want, I think that's something that Thais absolutely love. And then from there, I mean, the dozens of different varieties of noodles that you can order that you can try. I mean, we're covering five of the most popular types of noodles, but that's only scratching the surface. There's still so many other types, so many varieties of soup noodles that you can try in Thailand. And another reason is because when you eat a hot bowl of soup noodles, it actually warms you up and then you sweat, but then you cool down. And so that's why a, a bowl of hot noodles is so soothing and so satisfying, even in the, the humidity, the extreme humidity, boiling heat of Bangkok. Hey, on second thought, remember how I was saying there were huge pieces of meat and it's not possible to take a, them in a single bite, bite size? Well, actually, they're total one biters because it's so tender. Oh. oh man, we're three big bowls of noodles in. I couldn't be happier and we still have two more to go, but he is an absolute legend. I mean, just the fact that he stands behind boiling pans of beef parts all day long, slices up beef. He is, he's truly a master. He's a legend of beef noodles in Bangkok and one of the best without a doubt. Oh yeah. Okay, we're moving on to the next place. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh.
Next up on this Thai street food noodle tour, it was just a five minute drive to get here, just around the corner from the beef noodles. That's almost too fast. I didn't even have a chance to digest, but ready to eat again. And this is a very popular noodle soup, especially in Bangkok and Ayutthaya. And it's very, very iconic. And we're in the Dusit area of Bangkok. This is a big government area. Here we are. Gwe Tiao Rua Ba Som Jit. Boat noodles. Oh man, whenever you can just in, like immediately smell the aroma of boat noodles and you know it's boat noodles because it has a really strong like cinnamony aroma to it. I think it's cinnamon, yeah, mostly like a sweet aromatic cinnamon. Ah. Along with that aroma, that cinnamony, very iconic aroma that you smell when you detect boat noodles, one of the main reasons you'll know it's boat noodles is because usually there literally is a boat at the restaurant. Oftentimes they they serve off of a boat, uh, or they boil the noodles on the boat, or they have a boat hanging as decoration uh, to signify that it's boat noodles, and to also preserve the history of boat noodles, which I'll share with you a little bit about as I start eating. Okay, so she's assembling the bowls. I got beef. There's already some seasoning in the bowls. I need look. Look. Oh my God. Okay, so this is beef blood goes in. That's the signature of boat noodles. Fresh raw blood goes into your bowl. And then I got, and I got with senlek, which are the medium-sized rice noodles, so she's just blanching that up. Oh man, that broth smells incredible. And then the broth goes on top. And as that broth hits, the hot broth hits the blood, it just immediately cooks the blood and curdles the blood to make a nice, rich, juice broth. And not forgetting pork crackling, which you absolutely need. Great spot on the side of the road, but kind of within the parking lot of a, of a building. So it's a little bit quiet back here, really nice. And you can see that the, the bowls, the portions of noodles, they're tiny. This is the entire bowl of noodles. Let's try that, let's try that broth first, actually. Mm. 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 Man, that flavor on its own is delicious already. Again, it's rich, but it's not oily. And the flavor profile here, it's less sweet, much less sweet than other versions of boat noodles that you'll find in Bangkok. I don't think it's really sweet at all. It's mostly sour, a little bit spicy, and quite salty, but in a very addictive kind of way. I like salty. Uh, and then you've got the, the crunch of the water morning glory. You've got a little bit of sourness in there the, again, the greatness of that broth, and then the noodles. But yeah, definitely season. I take the bowls and just kind of combine them together, and then you've got all the broth together in one bowl. Additionally, they do have an option where you can order bigger bowls as well, but it's still so iconic to eat the small bowls. I'm gonna go in seasoning vinegar, that with a little bit of chili. Oh man, oh, I love it. The acidity, contrasting the meatiness. I think what I like about this boat noodles is it's not, it's not greasy. It doesn't feel too heavy or rich. Uh, whereas others can be really kind of oily, really heavy, meaty. This one is like nice and refreshing. I've been to a lot of boat noodles, but this is my first time to this one. Uh, this one is very famous and it's a generations old boat noodles, legendary. I think they've been around for 40 or 50 years, same family recipe. There we go, we got it. Okay, when you eat, Boat noodles, you have to eat crispy pork cracklings, crispy pork skin, but she also gave me fried pork skin also to add. So that's probably why it's not too rich because you add in your own richness. A few of these pork skins. Oh, you can immediately hear them popping and crackling in that, in that broth. Okay, now we've got another dimension of texture, flavor, and fat. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Back to the story of boat noodles. Why is it served in such small portions? Bangkok and Ayutthaya, and all this central region of Thailand was known for their canals, especially historically, but even up until today. And so you've heard of floating markets for sure, where people would gather together on the canals in their boats and sell, I mean, it's a full marketplace within the canals, floating boats as stores. And because you're on a boat, I mean, you're serving on a boat and you might even be eating on a boat, and boats rock back and forth, especially when in a canal when other boats go by. You've got the wake 
And so boats go rocking back and forth. And so you wouldn't want to have a bowl and have it overflowing to the brim like an infinity edge of soup noodles because you'd rock and that would just spill all over the place. You'd have hot soup in your lap. And so they started serving just a few bites in the bottom of a bowl so that it could slosh around in your bowl without overflowing, without spilling out. And so to this day, boat noodles are typically served in small portions, small bowls, but you eat a lot of bowls. Well, I'm only gonna eat two bowls because we've eaten a lot of noodles today and we still have one more to go. But I remember when I first came to Thailand, I would just eat boat noodle after boat noodle, stack up a, a big stack of bowls, eat 10, 15 bowls, 20 bowls of noodles, all in one sitting. Love that broth. I mean, to be honest, you wouldn't even tell there's blood in it. But it is raw, but it cooks with that hot broth. So that, it's not really raw blood, it's, it is fully cooked. Oh, I'm moving a little bit slower than I did in the early morning, but we've got more to eat. And then on the outside, you'll find kanom buang. It's a sweet, sweet snack uh, made with a batter and then kind of like a meringue cream as well as egg yolk candy on the inside. Mmm. I like uh... <laughs> And you'll find that a lot of snacks sell outside of the boat noodle restaurants because they're so popular. You know, after you have some salty boat noodles, you want a little sweet snack. Okay, let's move on. Welcome to the next noodle spot. This place is called Hia Jai. And it's uncle, Chinese. They serve Cantonese style. Well, in Thai, it's called Bami Gyo which is Cantonese style egg noodles with dumplings, wonton dumplings. This place is legendary on the street. I ordered Bami Gyo, which is egg noodles with wonton, with soup, and also with uh, cha siu mudang, and also crab, bu. And right now we got here right as they opened in the mid afternoon, but in the evening that's just packed with tables and they're preparing for a huge night rush. But we got a table up the staircase, King's holding the table up there. That's where we're gonna sit. Oh, look at the huge piece of mukrab, crispy pork belly, all ready to go. Oh, kapun magab. Oh, taste test, test. He's making the noodles. I need mukrab, kap. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, I mag up. Oh man. So he had a piece of crispy pork belly. He dipped it into this sauce. Oh, that's just a, a flavor explosion in your mouth. Mmm. No, oh, mudang, come. Okay, come. This is the cha siu. Oh. Cha siu, come. Oh. Oh, man, that melts in your mouth. It's so fatty. So juicy. One ton, one ton. One ton. Oh, the dumplings go in. Oh, here goes in, in some egg noodles. Okay, so they dunk them into cold water first. Rinse off that starch. Here's the egg noodles. Immediate fresh batch of bami egg noodles, and Uncle immediately starts mixing it. Oh, lung sai like up. Man mu, my cup lung. Ah, so he adds some. Ah, ma, He adds some. Oh, into the garlic, into the lard, with some of the pork oil. Oh, I think this might be a taste test. Oh, wow. You have any cup lung? Hmm. Hot, 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 hot. Oh, oh, oh dumpling taste. Oh, very cool. Oh, ron, ching, ching, ching. Oh, 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 man. I think I just tasted everything from the cart. He's giving me a taste test of everything. I'm going to go eat my bowl of noodles. Up the steps, I think this might be the VIP table up here. As we can see all the action happening below and smell all the aroma. And actually, we made it to number five in my bowl. These egg noodles are amazing. I already had a taste test of them. Okay, let's just try that broth. A little peppery, a little bit sweet, really rich and porky. Oh man, 
and you taste the flavor of those meats, you taste the cha siu in there. Man, these are kind of thick too. Like it almost looks like uh, almost looks like a ramen. You can tell the the quality of these these noodles and the way they cook them expertly. But they have a nice springiness to them, um, hearty, yet not too thick, and really, yeah. I mean, I love egg noodles. These are great. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. But season chili, an absolute must. A little bit of chili goes in. The Thai touch is to add vinegar to everything, especially noodles. All noodles. All right, there we go. Oh, the dumplings are amazing. The cha siu is delicious, or mudang in Thai. Mm. Oh yeah, love it with that contrast of vinegar, and especially with the chili. Take a look inside of this dumpling. Sometimes you get dumplings in Thailand that are quite like small on the pork in the inside, but this one's quite nice and generous with the pork filling. Okay, let's try that crab. I like how they fully peel it for you. All you have to do is bite. Mmm, delicious. I think it's a blue swimmer crab, just the claws. Sweet, fresh, delicious. There's some pak wang tung, it's similar to choy sum in there as well. Or they call it Cantonese vegetable. And you've got nuggets of crab as well. Oh man, I love all the proteins in here. I mean, from the crab claws, to the crab nuggets, to the cha siu. Actually, the cha siu is excellent. It's more real Cantonese style rather than the, the Thai style. It has that depth of flavor, that smokiness, that kind of uh, smoke ring around the edges. Crispy pork belly, so many different proteins going on. It's a deluxe bowl. And I mean, I did order the deluxe bowl. I'd ordered the grand bowl. I ordered everything in one bowl, but you can go more simple as well. Mission complete, challenge complete. All five bowls of the most popular Thai street food soup noodles in a day, in one day, actually all back to back and that was a, a lot of delicious noodles. I'll have all the information, all the exact places that I ate in the description box below that you can check out when you're in Bangkok. But I mean, these noodles are popular for a reason. I mean, all the noodles that we ate because you'll find them across Bangkok, across Thailand. So I'd encourage if you see one of them uh, and it looks good, give it a try, definitely. And I wanna say a huge thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, let me know your favorite Thai soup noodles in the description box below. I'd love to hear from you. And thanks again for watching. Hope you have an amazing day and I will see you on the next video. Goodbye from Bangkok, Thailand.